So I think this is the strongest part of the Trump Harris debate. This question on abortion. This was kind of when Kamala woke up. Up until this point, Kamala was very shaky. She looked very uneasy, a little nervous, uncomfortable on stage. After this abortion question, she kind of woke up. And also Trump's response to this. I think this was his best part of the night as well. Founded that you were able to kill Roe v. Wade last year. You said that you were proud to be the most pro-life president in American history. Madam Vice President, I want to get your response to President Trump. Well, as I this said, this is the best Kamala lies, moment of the debate. And that's not actually a surprising fact. Let's understand how we got here. Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And they did exactly as he intended. And now in over 20 states, there are Trump abortion bans, which make it criminal for a doctor or nurse to provide health care. In one state, it provides prison for life. Trump abortion bans that make no exception even for rape and incest, which understand what that means. A survivor of a crime of violation to their body does not have the right to make a decision about what happens to their body next. That is immoral. And one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree. The government, and Donald Trump certainly, should not be telling a woman what to do with her body. I have talked with women around our country. You want to talk about this is what people wanted? Pregnant women who want to carry a pregnancy to term, suffering from a miscarriage, being denied care in an emergency room because the health care providers are afraid they might go to jail, and she's bleeding out in a car in the parking lot? She didn't want that. Her husband didn't want that. A 12 or 13 year old survivor of incest being forced to carry a pregnancy to term? They don't want that. And I pledge to you, when Congress passes a bill to put back in place the protections of Roe v. Wade as president of the United States, I will proudly sign it into law. Very interesting observation, then I'll get back to this. Notice how muted Trump is during this debate. This is not like his other debates. He would be cutting you off. He would have a response for everything. Kamala Harris was the more animated one. Like she was the one, as Trump is speaking, cutting him off, trying to trying to cut him off. He actually said a couple times during the debate, like, yo, I'm speaking. Like, yo, I'm speaking. Like, are you done? He did that at least twice in the debate, maybe three times. I don't remember one part of this debate where Trump interrupted Kamala. Like he was seemed very muted and maybe it's advice from his team that this is not going to go over well with people but it was just an interesting observation understand if donald trump were to be reelected, he will sign a national abortion ban understand in his project 2025 there would be a national abortion a monitor that would be monitoring your pregnancies your miscarriages i think the american people believe that certain freedoms in particular, the freedom to make decisions about one's own body should not be made by the government. So that was Kamala's best point. This is a turning point in the debate for her. This is where after this question, she got a lot more comfortable. If you want to go watch the debate, go on ABC News. Look at all the time before. This is maybe like the second or third question. She was very uneasy. She didn't look comfortable at all at first. After this question, she really got in her back. She looked a lot more a lot less uneasy, I'll say. But then Trump's response to this is also, I think, his best part of the debate as well. Let's watch it. He goes again, it's a lie. I'm not signing a ban, and there's no reason to sign a ban because we've gotten what everybody wanted, Democrats, Republicans, and everybody else, and every legal scholar wanted it to be brought back into the states, and the states are voting, and it may take a little time, but for 52 years, this issue has torn our country apart and they wanted it back in the states and I did something that nobody thought was possible the states are now voting what she says is an absolute lie and as far as the abortion ban no I'm not in favor of abortion ban but it doesn't matter because it's this to the issue states. has now been taken over by the states and is that true did during that time after Roe v Wade that 52 years he's speaking about let me know in the comments there are, lot, there are a lot of people out there who are smarter than I am. Was it as contentious? Like most people, like a lot of scholars, they wanted this decision back to the states, out of the federal government, back to the state. Is that true? 
Would you veto a na national abortion ban if it came well, to Well, I won't desk? have to because, again, uh, two things. Number one, she said she'll go back to Congress. She'll never get the vote. This Boom. This, is, this right here is what I'm talking about. This is Trump's best part of the debate because it's... It, it just shows the difference between someone who's been in office as president and someone who hasn't. Number one, she said she'll go back to Congress. She'll never get the vote. It's impossible for her to get the vote, uh, especially now with the 50-50 and essentially 50-50 in both Senate and the House. She's not going to get the vote. She can't get the vote. She won't even come close to it. So it's just talk. You know hmm. what it reminds me of when they said they're going to get student loans uh, terminated? Right. It ended up being a total catastrophe. Yeah. The student loans. And then... So her, I don't know if you guys remember that. Like... That's true, it, and it, it, Trump is kind of pointing out like, yo, you're just saying these things. You know, it's I know it's not going to happen. You know, it's go not going to happen. You're saying these things to get the vote. Yeah, Kamala, she gave a very impassioned response on the abortion issue, but at the end of the day, it's just Trump kind of grounds it in realism. Like, you're not going to take this back to Congress because Congress is split. And by the way, this is just like that thing y'all did with the student loans. Y'all were talking, trying to get students and young people riled up and, and on your side about the student loans. You said you were going to do this and that, and it just got stopped. It got stopped by our system of checks and balances. This kind of supports Trump's whole thing, his attack point on Kamala, which is basically, if you were going to do these things, why haven't you done them? In this case, he's like, well, you can't do it because of Congress. And this is just like this other thing you said you were going to do, but you didn't. I don't know if y'all remember the student loan thing. Like they had us fill out that form. You're gonna get twenty thousand dollars. Oh, if 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 it's if it's denied, we'll take it to the Supreme Court. Then they lost again the Supreme Court, and then now it's just like this false promise that was just used to garner our support and emotions. I, I think As students. probably her boss. If you call him a boss, he spends all his time on the beach. But look, her boss went out and said, we'll do it again, we'll do it a different way. And he went out, got the rejected Court. again by the Supreme Court. Yeah. So all these students got uh, taunted with this whole thing about this whole idea. And how unfair that would have been, part of the reason they lost to the millions and millions of people that had to pay off their student loans. They didn't get it for free. But they were saying it's the same way that they talked about that, mm. that they talk about abortion. But if I yeah. So I think that was the strongest part of the debate for both of them. But also, I'm a more of a policy guy. <laughs> like, So this is like, the, in this debate, but firstly, I'll say, I don't think this debate is going to sway anyone's opinion. Like, if you're an undecided voter, you're one, in one of those swing states, sometimes you vote Democrat, sometimes you vote Republican, and you don't know who you're voting for yet. This debate is not going to convince you, I don't think. Because I'm not voting for either of them. I'm open to being swayed, but this was exactly what I expected. I think on social media, you have a lot of people saying that this is a slam dunk for Kamala. Kamala cooked him. I think the only people that are saying that are the people who had low expectations for Kamala. I didn't have low expectations coming into this. And people laughed at me for this. In other videos I've done, I say, yo, Kamala, when she's in it, when she's debating, like she, she can be very sharp. Like I've seen her debate before. We've all seen her debate in 2016. So I didn't expect her to come into this and just stink it up. But a lot of people felt that way because she's not doing interviews and then they they're still scarred from how joe biden performed in the previous debate so i think the people who are like yo kamala cooked are the people who had low expectations for her to me this played out exactly as i expected and i don't think this is going to sway many undecided voters and i also feel in the in the debate there was too much time spent on january 6 on afghanistan on trump's lawsuits this is old stuff that's over Kamala said, like, yo, we haven't been in in Afghanistan in a combat zone, in a war zone the entire pre Biden presidency. Cool. If that's true, cool. So why are we talking about this? And it's not like we're talking about this because Kamala went on a tangent about Trump's lawsuits or because Trump went on a tangent about January 6th. The reason they were, they're talking about this is because the moderators asked him about it. It's like, we got to move on with this old stuff. There's so many things in America that people are impacted by, mainly the economy and healthcare. And it, you speak about, there's like one question about the economy, but it's so vague. Like there's so many parts of the economy you can talk about. Student loans, medical debt, home ownership, rent prices, inflation, the Federal Reserve. Would you cut rates? Would, who would you appoint? Like there's so many different factors of the economy that you can speak about. And this is like the number one issue for most Americans, if not number two. 
wasting 20, 30 minutes on Jan 6 and then Afghanistan and then Trump's lawsuits, it just felt like a total waste of time, especially when a lot of people feel they're trying to fill out Kamala Harris to see what are her policies because she won't do interviews. What are her policies? So I let me know because I'm considering voting for one of you guys. We need to we know what he's about. What about you? So anyways, that's all I got for today. What did y'all think? Did y'all think Kamala cooked? I don't think any of them cooked the either one is that is exactly what i expected to me there's no clear winner i guess if you had to pick a clear winner if i had to pick a clear winner i would say kamala only because so many so many people seem to have such a low expectation of her and she seems to have exceeded that low expectation so if i had to just go on the general consensus i would say okay sure you could pick kamala as the winner but in my personal opinion there's no clear winner here this went about exactly as I expected. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Top5RapWebsite.com. Peace.